this year? Is he there now, Andrew? You hear me now? There oh, there goes. you go. Hey, Gar. <laughs> I think I'm going to do a television ad for some telephone company. Can yes. you hear me now? There yes, you go. perfect. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> I'm doing all right. How are you? Uh, hanging in there. Tell me what that yeah. that game was like, Gary. Well, it was, uh, I mean, obviously very strange. There was a lot of uh, anxiety surrounding it because a couple of games had been postponed, and the question of whether or not that game should have been played at all uh, remained in the air. Was it going to cause a, a, a centerpiece for further problems, or was it going to be a centerpiece for kind of calming things down? And nobody knew the answer to that. And then you get the ball game itself. It was just so strange. Um, you realize how much the crowd uh, really matters to the broadcast and obviously to the players too. And I think the attitude that whole day for everybody involved was, uh, you know, let's do this thing, let's get it over with, and let's get out of here uh, with the hope that there would be no further problems, uh, and there weren't. Yeah, and that's a great comparison because, as you said, there were a lot of people who felt like it shouldn't have been played, and that was kind of the yeah. feeling going into the possibility of these games because of the coronavirus being played in front of an empty building. Like, should the game be played? And, and having your heart not completely in something that you're doing and the challenge of that, not just for the players, but for you as a broadcaster. Yeah, because you're, it's a whole different set of circumstances and the things you think about. I mean, going. I remember going to the ballpark. It's like, how am I gonna, what am I going to do here? Can I get excited? Should I get excited? Is it okay to get excited? Do I remain, you know, just completely calm? And, and I, at one point I thought, you know, it's more like doing the Masters in the 18th hole with a couple guys going for birdie and for the jacket than it was doing a baseball game because you, you felt as though you had to be silent almost. Uh, but you couldn't be silent because there was no other noise to fill the gap. So you had to be saying something, but what, what should you say? So there was all kinds of that kind of mental stuff going on, and I think, for the players, it may have been, it, it, we're going to go out and play. I mean, this was like a pickup basketball game that you have a, during noon lunch hour or something or a pickup baseball game you had as a kid. You're going to go out and play. Nobody's going to be there. You still get involved in the game. You try and perform. You do the best you can, but there's very little, there's very little excitement about this. This now, is kind of just going through the motions. Do you believe, I mean, obviously the press box is, is raised from the field, but if there's nobody in the crowd and you have a great voice that really carries – did you think the players heard you? Was that were you conscious about that? <laughs> Adam Jones came out of the dugout and told me to hold it down. <laughs> 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 that was dur during the game. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you you really you really were conscious of that uh, that your voice was echoing all over the place and could be heard because there wasn't another sound in the ballpark. Uh, so yes. Right. Yeah, players did hear you, uh, and and he, he said it with a smile on his face. He was joking, but it was just to point out just how quiet it was. Gary, I, I think this is such an interesting subject, and one day I think there'll be a, a fascinating 30 for 30 on, on this event um, and how it played out in Baltimore. And one of the storylines there uh, I, I really think has to be Buck Showalter and the role that he played in Baltimore during that time and how outspoken he was. What, how did you guys process sort of the role that Buck played, and do you think the community was aware and sort of appreciative of his outspokenness during that time? I think uh, I don't think he's ever gotten enough credit uh, for his response to the whole situation, not just the ballpark situation, but what was going on in Baltimore. Uh, I don't think a lot of people know, you know, Buck, Buck's dad was, uh, a, in his own way, a very strong civil rights advocate as a teacher superintendent in a school system where there was racism and uh, buck grew up with that and has very strong feelings uh about racism uh, against and very strongly uh speaks out when he th thinks it's there and part of that i think is what led buck to be so strong in his support of the community his support of the city it wasn't about taking sides it was about trying to realize how this was a community problem that was going on, that the community was going to have to solve it, that it was going to have to involve people of, of all color and all backgrounds. And, and, and Buck preached that, if you will, in what, and how he conducted himself and in what he said. And I think he had a tremendous impact in that, in that setting, um, more, I think, than people know. Um, I was thinking that, we're trying to find positives that come out of this, Gary. 
And one of the positives yeah. is you don't have to announce Glaber Torres for the first three games of the season. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Glaber Torres. <laughs> Glaber Torres? I don't know him. I do not know Glaber Torres. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, I, the way you handled that was spectacular, guy. <laughs> we loved it. We played that. We yeah. played that back a bunch. <laughs> it was honest to God. Look, it was just me. That's just me. It, uh, uh, there was nothing planned there. Uh, I love him. Uh, I congratulate him on the way he has performed overall, but particularly against the Orioles. But it was just so devastating. I mean, it was every at bat. <laughs> He was doing tremendous damage, and maybe that is the positive out of this. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, it's great. Gary, yeah. thank you for joining us. We really what, appreciate it, buddy. One, if I can have just – Anytime. Just wait, one, wait, Don has another question, Gary. Gary. Just because I might have told him this story years ago, but I don't know if the audience ever heard this story. I don't know if Gary even remembers. 1989, I'm a young Devil fan in the Devil fan club. I'm going to sit with a Devil at a dinner they had. The devil that I wanted to sit with canceled. He was Jim Corn. Remember Jim Corn? Jim Corn, yeah. Right. I remember Jim. Yep. And they said to me, they came to me, they apologized to me and said, listen, Jim canceled. We're going to put you with the announcers. And me being a young, like wanting to be in the sports business, wanting to do NHL play-by-play, -play, play, they put me with you and Chris Moore, who was the radio announcer for the Devils. Yeah. And it wasn't anything you said, Gary. You just allowed me to chew your ear off for like three hours and as somebody that is, is in the business and I'm getting to do NHL play-by-play, -play, thank you. And I still have your autograph in my thank man you. cave. Wow. From, from the thank table. It, like the, the devil logo with the table we were at. Yeah. And Gary yeah. Yeah. autographed it, and, and so did Chris Moore, and I have it hanging up there. So that was you know, a long time ago, over 30 years ago. But thank you. That was very nice of you. That's a nice positive, and uh, I've always said that's what makes this business worthwhile. Thank uh, you. I, I mean, I didn't even know this story. Gary, I'm so sorry. I, he, he annoys me for four hours a day, and I work with him. I can't even imagine what he did to you. <laughs> and, uh, and listen, Doc, Doc's amazing. I mean, Doc is phenomenal. But, boy, do I miss Thorne and Clement doing a big NHL game on ESPN or ABC. You, do you miss it, Gary? Oh, thank you. Uh, I miss the playoffs. Uh, always have. To me, uh, <clears throat> there's nothing in sports that equals the two and a half months of the NHL playoffs. It's uh, to me, it's the most spectacular sports presentation that there is, and the players give more yep. in those two and a half months than I think any any players give in any other sport. Well, hopefully, we Phenomenal. get to see it this year. Yeah, stay safe, yeah, my friend. Exactly. All right, fella, take care. Be well. All right, thank you. Now, uh, a it's... variety is just reporting, Peter. Yeah, you want to read it? No, 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 that's not what I had. I had something oh, else. Go ahead. WWE moves SmackDown Live to Orlando Performance Center with no live audience due to coronavirus. So that was speculated yesterday, and then the WWE said they were still planning to move forward in Detroit tomorrow night. I'm not surprised they're going to move it to the PC in Florida. It's probably the right thing if that's, in, in fact, true. You said it was Hollywood Reporter? Uh, no, Variety. Or variety, so yeah, it's probably legit. And also, we were talking to Gary Thorne, of course, the voice of the Orioles, and just a few minutes ago, I heard from my friends in Maryland, all public schools closed mm. in the state of Maryland March 16th to March 27th. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out uh, across all 50 states. And we were talking...